so the supplement part of it, uh, you, you sound, you both sound like you're advocating for like actually getting the nutrition dense, nutrition dense stuff that's out there, but supplements, uh, are you, do, you've got something in your arsenal, I'm sure. There are some things that I can recommend. And you know, if you look online and talk to people, there are a million things you can take. But from my experience, there are a few herbs that I like to take on an ongoing basis through the um, cold and flu season. One is an herb called cordyceps. It's in the mushroom family, and it is a um, it, it's. It has an affinity for the respiratory tract to protect that and tonify that, but also it helps us with our stress response. And so I feel like it protects us on a number of levels. Um, another herb that is kind of newer in the United States, it was recently made popular by Dr. Oz, who mentioned it as the top five thing you have to have in your, you know, in case the flu wipes out all of humanity kind of toolkit, um, is Andrographis. But the studies are very favorable coming out of Europe. And that is also, I believe, is that in the, the mushroom family? It's in some Chinese herbs we can talk about. Oh, OK, yeah. OK. Yeah. It might not, yeah, I think I'm remembering it correctly. And then the other one is elderberry, which is great for kids. It's in a lot of, of kids' um, cough syrups and cold remedies and that kind of thing. But on an ongoing basis, it helps to protect our mucous membranes by promoting more immuno, immunoglobulin production and, and helping to protect us. Hmm. Okay. I think people are, are most at home with local herbs that they've grown up with. And so we all know echinacea, which is very cooling, very good for a hot type of virus. Those of you who are feeling more adventuresome could try a Chinese uh, herb that has andrographis as one of the ingredients. Mm -hmm. And it's called ganmao ling. Ganmao means common cold in Chinese, and ling means a pill. And this is the most widely used, widely prescribed, and widely taken Chinese herb product. It's considered over-the-counter. It's like uh, contact here that we grew up with, but much safer. We know what's in it. It's herbal, and uh, it's now considered GMP, good manufacturing practices. Most Chinese herbs you find in stores will say GMP, which means it has an independent body verifying that the manufacturing processes are good and all the ingredients are listed. This is very safe. It can, it's safe enough to be taken preventively if you've just been around people who've got a cold. Mm -hmm. It's safe enough for children. There's a sugar-coated uh, version uh, that kids will take, six-year-olds, eight-year-olds. And uh, it, it really seems to help, uh, especially with the initial stage of a cold. It's not very elegant. It's not a classical formula. Uh, but it's for this kind of venue, it's a safe one, uh, one that anyone can take for just about any type of cold. Mm -hmm. Uh, and let's uh, move into something a little bit different, and that's more like directly in on how your fields work. Uh, how expensive is natural medicine? I mean, it, some of it, it does sound exotic, you know, and unpronounceable, uh, <laughs> like all medicine, I guess. <laughs> but medicines seem to be expensive, you know. We have the generic brands, but how does that work in, in natural medicine? I feel very strongly about this, that you know, medicine and healing is about going far away, but it's also about bringing it home, the way Amy was saying. You know, going back to Lodi once a month is great. We learn this stuff, we go to school, I went to China four times, but it was really to bring the medicine home. And uh, this is uh, coming full circle. And every type of medicine is exotic, going through an MRI, is a very uh, scary, sometimes life-altering experience for some people. Going to a recovery group, an AA meeting, is a, a huge event for some people. Life-changing, very exotic. And these are, these are part of transformation, going outside of our normal ruts. So doing something cross-cultural can really help open our minds, try some different things, think and, and uh, act in some new ways, and break out of some of the old patterns of disease. As far as costs, I feel even more strongly about this. Having worked in public health in Portland for 10 years, that health is a right, as my teacher said. It's not a privilege. And Amy and I both teach and practice natural medicine. And natural medicines really do grow on trees. The herb I was talking about, Gan Mao Ling, you can go and get it for about $4 at any Chinese market anywhere in North America, uh, you know, in Chicago or anywhere. 
and uh, you know what you're getting, and it, it, it works very well with less side effects. And so these kinds of things uh, in Portland, there's no excuse to get sick. We have so many schools turning out so many graduates of so many different types of modalities that you can get a treatment now for about the price of a sandwich you know, in Portland. You can get quality care of different types from students that we supervise at our, at our college. They do tremendous work. They're so eager. And they've been studying for years. They, they know more than a lot of practitioners who went to school 10 years ago. Uh, they do amazing work and they get very close supervision. So come to a student clinic it, and get some good, basic, natural care. They can change your life. Yeah. I, th I think one of the th daunting things is, uh, say for instance, if I go to a, a New Seasons or a, a Fred Meyer, you know, in their natural foods area, uh, and I don't know what I'm looking for. It just seems daunting. Mm -hmm to how to sort through everything and uh, begin to learn something. What, how can we s start it's, to get it's a bead on this thing? I'm even overwhelmed when I go to there's so much places. of it, yeah. Oh my goodness, I, I've been studying this well. I started school in 96. It's been my life since 1996 and I walk in a new season and go, holy moly, you know? Um, I think that's when you need to sit down with someone you find a practitioner who you can talk to and have a, a nice professional relationship with and prioritize things for yourself. Learn about what supplements need to be of a certain quality and which ones can be. Like vitamin C is vitamin C. But probiotics, which I think are a crucial thing to take, especially during cold and flu season, there may some be some variations in quality. Fish oils, another you want fish oil to be good quality. And I do recommend a cod liver oil to people during the winter. It has vitamin A and E and D in it, and it's great. So, you know, it, when you go into those stores, they're going to try and sell you things. <laughs> That's their job. Yeah. And so um, the other thing I want people to think about, too, is that, you know, we are looking at a patient in terms of wanting to treat the root causes of disease. and. When you go into a health food store, they'll say, oh, what symptom do you have? Oh, this is good for that symptom. You could spend thousands of dollars a month on supplements just chasing your symptoms. When the reality is if you sat down with someone who knows what they're doing and can really help you with your diet and how you're moving and then guide you on what to take, you treat the root, you shouldn't need to take so much stuff. Well, that's really yeah. good advice. So it's very cost effective. If anyone here goes and sees a naturopath the way I did, right here in downtown Portland, took a blood test, and then he could tell me, here, you could use more of this, and you could take it and notice a difference. Or go to a Chinese acupuncturist or herbalist who will feel your pulse. Yeah? And just going a couple of times to get a general strategy Maybe seeing one or two different people to get some really good ideas can save you a lot of time and trouble and give you years of um, direction and ways of improving your health. Yeah, so I have people come in with grocery bags full of supplements. Yeah, they have here, their bags full of drugs, <laughs> but also bags yeah. full of supplements. And a lot of times I'm like, okay, we're going to just stop all this. And you should see the looks of horror. <laughs> but we really shouldn't need to be taking so much stuff. There's seasonal things that you want to think about. There are things that you should do a couple times a week, perhaps. Depends on your constitution, your own history. But, yeah. So, so to find what I'm hearing you say, then, in order to find, it, like, like with any person that you are seeking service from, uh, you you want to have questions for them. You want to see how you feel with them, mm -hmm. sort of set up a consult, maybe? Yeah, Is yeah. that what it would be called? Mm -hmm. I recommend you should have a good working relationship. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, are working with a surgeon or a pharmacist, it doesn't matter as much how well you get along, although I think it's important, mm -hmm. anyone who's working with you. But with a natural health practitioner, you want to be able to discuss at progressively deeper levels all the different aspects of your life. Mm -hmm. So you should feel good and comfortable with each step of the process. Mm -hmm. uh, it should never hurt. Um, there shouldn't be any kind of um, uh, discomfort uh, with the process that can't be resolved uh, quickly. And I think we have a lot of, of great practitioners in this town to choose from. Mm -hmm. yeah. So f just jumping in, well, starting at the natural... Mm -hmm. 
At NCNM. Yeah. Yes, we have the main clinic at NCNM. And then we also have many satellite clinics too that we call our community mm -hmm. clinics that we have all over the Portland metro area serving people who might not be able to afford even you know the NCNM yeah. clinic. And so kind of getting the feet wet mm -hmm. and then and then going from there and just going forward. Yeah, I work with people yeah. with every kind of budget you can imagine. Mm -hmm. I have patients who come in who are homeless, who have, you know, lost their job, everyone up to billionaires. I have the whole range. And we all deserve, we all have that right to be healthy. Uh, I wanted to just briefly talk about acupuncture because uh, that's something that I've been doing uh, last week and I'm having another appointment this week. And it seems kind of mysterious, <laughs> these really sharp needles and how do you know where they're going? And sometimes it's a little bit painful depending on where, it, you know, Talk a little bit about yeah. what, I mean, that to me really does seem sort of magic. Yeah. I exactly know how it works. Yeah, so there's a lot of everyday magic. Um, the fact that we have a bus system in Portland is magical. <laughs> if you've ever lived in a place like Dallas, Texas, you know how magical and incredible it is to be able to <laughs> text, message, and see when the next bus is coming, and that it is coming, and it will stop most of the time. <laughs> So I teach acupuncture, and I teach acupuncture point location. And so for me, it is less mysterious than what happens when I eat food. <laughs> I know less what happens inside of here. And the beauty of acupuncture is that the mechanism has been very well explored by scientists. And we understand it not completely, but enough to make the neurobiologists feel very uh, intrigued and satisfied that there is a scientific basis for it. This then helps other uh, types of modalities that are also based on bioenergy, like homeopathy, which has very good outcomes, but the mechanism isn't as well understood. So these uh, medicines can all work together and help each other be better understood in their own terms.